Um, from my perspective as a social scientist, um, I think um, a key issue in climate change is actually adaptation. And um, I think we have to um, look into how people are going to live with climate change and therefore their strategies for adaptation. And when we talk of adaptation, we can talk of several um, strategies. For example, one is migration. One is um, health, health infrastructure and health services. How would they adequately respond um, to the effects of climate change, especially in view of um, water, uh, greater waterborne diseases, vector diseases, as well as heat stress. Um, also, another challenge for adaptation would be how to actually govern adaptation. Um, so we're talking of the governance of adaptation and how it would, it would adequately proceed and be effective. We can think of um, national level adaptation programs. But what about um, adaptation that is happening on the ground and more meso level or middle level um, adaptation programs um, that would effectively respond to the needs on the ground rather than um, focus entirely or at least um, devote our efforts into developing national level adaptation programs. Although, having said that, I think such programs on a national scale are quite necessary in order to sustain awareness and sustain um, commitment for um, to strengthen adaptation for, towards so, social re resilience. I think a gender approach can um, contribute to the climate change discussions because um, a gender approach actually um, offers a more disaggregated view of two things. First, the effects of climate change. The impacts of climate change will be felt differently by women and men. And this is largely mediated by their positions, by their social positions. Um, usually it's not a level playing field out there in society, to put it simply. So inevitably, the impacts of climate change would differ um, for women and for men, for different ethnic groups, for that matter, for different um, classes, such as the rich and the poor. And the second thing is the responses to climate change, um, specifically um, with respect to adaptation. Um, people will have different capacities to adapt, different resources, access to different resources to adapt to climate change. For example, access to credit facilities, to lending institutions, um, to adequate skills and knowledge with which to adapt. Women and men would be positioned differently um, with regards to their adaptive strategies. And that's what gender, a gender analysis or a gender perspective can actually put forward, is how to look at both the impacts and the responses to climate change in a more nuanced way. I think um, there are two major challenges. First is analytical, and therefore the challenge is to draw the linkages, to draw and recognize the linkages between, on one hand, gender, and on the other, climate change. Often, um, the knowledge and understanding of climate change is very much um, discipline driven. If you are a climate scientist, meteorologist, um, natural natural science, uh, academic, um, or in the in the physical sciences, you probably would just um, devote um, yourself to the study of the biophysical effects of climate change, for example. And sometimes, in that regard, the linkages with gender are not easily drawn because gender lies firmly within the realm of the social sciences. And that's what I mean um, with reference to, we often, um, we often look into such issues as climate change from a very discipline-bound perspective. Now, it, climate change, I think, requires a multidisciplinary response, and that's how we should look beyond our disciplines to actually um, um, build bridges towards a more holistic understanding of both the impacts and the responses to climate change. So that's one challenge, drawing the linkages. 
Um, the second challenge is actually more political. Having drawn the linkages and having uh, understood what a gender perspective and a gender analysis could contribute to the understanding of climate change, I think there is also need for champions, if you like, um, and this is in the realm of politics, to really put forward um, the idea that climate change will affect women and men in different ways, and therefore to respond to that imbalance and to redress that imbalance. Um, so those would, those would be the two areas which I feel would be the main challenges. Analytical, drawing the linkages, and second, action-oriented, a more politically motivated response to a holistic understanding and strategy towards um, adapting to climate change. My background is actually development studies. And I think uh, development studies has a lot to learn from and contribute to um, international relations as well as non-traditional security studies. Um, I feel there's a lot of linkages to be drawn um, academically, certainly. Um, I feel the differences actually lie in that, of course, international relations, non-traditional security studies from its genealogy appears to be much more state-centric, much more macro in its perspective. Um, but with respect to development studies, you have, of course, a very interdisciplinary um, field of study that combines anthropology, political science, economics, um, and, um, uh, and sociology. And therefore, you have a, mo a more multi-scale approach to looking at, well, social reality, if you like. But I think that these two fields can certainly learn from each other. Um, there is, in fact, from, from my own field of gender studies, there is, in fact, gender and political relations as a, as a domain of study. So that's where, again, the bridges can, can actually be created. And um, I, therefore, welcome, um, with respect to your next question, what role do you see in play in it? What role do you see it in playing in addressing climate change? I think um, it's a, it has a very strategic role, RSIS. Um, I think it's very strategic that it called itself non-traditional security studies because certainly climate change is increasingly a human security issue. I wouldn't want to say security issue. Um, and I think, um, at least from the perspective of me sitting in AIT, the Asian Institute of Technology, which is a regional postgraduate institution, I think we can actually have um, collaboration in the future with respect to exchange arrangements, um, as well as joint research and public events that we could perhaps hold together in response to the challenge of climate change and adaptation, because also we bring together a multidisciplinary team into the study, the study and the research of climate change. I think it was a very interesting conference in that it was uh, multidisciplinary. Um, I learned a lot, absolutely learned a lot. Um, I'm not uh, quite into the international relations side of the climate change challenge, but from this, from this uh, meeting, certainly learned um, the finer points, um, especially when it comes to multilateral relationships with regards to, and its implications with regards to climate change.